The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. Another wonderful day to get a very special edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, do we go into the breach, dear friends? The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. As we start this uh, trading show at 2, as we always do, uh, we look at the S&P up 21 points. I thought uh, the, this market would probably do this on Monday or Tuesday, but uh, man, you got uh, a lot of people short. Some of these stocks probably shouldn't be, and I think we're having a small short squeeze going into fund buying next week. I knew we'd have one kind of down day, but man, we didn't even get much of that. And uh, of course, uh, Intel earnings, some other ones, um, kind of, uh, well, I think we've got some emails here where we'll discuss it, and uh, some other issues going on out here, but uh Man, it's just very hard for me to see anything before the 8th of February in the way of a meaningful pullback in the indexes. I do suspect we're going to have fairly decent uh, sector rotation next week as uh, some of these horses look kind of tired. But I think uh, that tiredness is going to get replaced with rotation. And once that rotation's over, we'll probably see the indexes pull back. But I keep on looking at that seventh, eighth day uh, when I'm looking at my charts and trying to figure it out. And it still kind of looks like going into that weekend would be kind of where you might be able to see some weakness. May start on Thursday, but I'm thinking that oh, that late into that weekend looks to me like we may have some sectors kind of get a little tireder than some, especially on that sector rotation. But that's it. Anyway, uh, we're up uh, 20 points on the S&P cash. Uh, get this thing up here. Uh, crude oil's up 77 cents. Gold's down 11. And uh, what's the Russell's up 1.85. And the Dow's up 109. NASDAQ is up 62. And I, I had gotten a bunch of email, pretty much all the same questions. Uh, we're going to see 2,900, and I think the answer is yes through fund buying. Uh, but at some point, we're going to see a retrace. It's probably not going to be a big one. My guess is that the uh, people uh, are going to, or that some people are going to scream bloody murder, uh, not ever knowing how a market ever pulled back, kind of like the uh, Bitcoin folk. It was going to 20,000, then it was going to 40, it was going to 100,000, and got cut in half. Don't think the uh, stock market here is that bad. Uh, still going through uh, 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 these earnings calls and what they mean and doing more research on that. We'll talk a little bit more about a conversation I had with an accountant um, that uh, I wanted to have on the show, but... Uh, I'll tell you why he didn't want to come on. It had nothing to do with us. Um, but uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, just interesting stuff. Well, I'll leave it at that. Um, what else do we have? Well, that's it. Uh, earnings, earnings, earnings. We'll get to that. Uh, maybe a little bit of pat on the back, a little tip of the hat, not of the cap. Uh, kind of a little bit of uh, the sting, uh, thumb of the nose, eh, maybe. Got uh, lots of nice emails already from folks. So uh, why don't you uh, you know, get in on that? Start sending some emails at path at tfnn.com. E uh, call at 877-927-6648. 
and uh, we'll talk about a lot of this stuff. Okay, so what else do we have? Well, let's get some little history out of the way, then we'll get into some stock charts, and we'll talk about some of the stuff happening out here. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1788, Captain Arthur Phillip guides a fleet of 11 British ships carrying convicts to the colony of New South Wales, basically Australia. After uh, overcoming a period of hardship, the fledgling colony began to celebrate the anniversary of this date with great fanfare. The British government uh, in uh, 1786 appointed uh, Arthur Phillip captain of the HMS Sirius. Well, are you serious? Yes, he got the serious and commissioned him to establish an agricultural work camp there for British convicts with little idea what he would expect from the mysterious and distant land. Philip had great uh, difficulty assembling the fleet and uh, all of his requests for experienced farmers to assist them and get started were repeatedly denied and uh, he was poorly funded and outfitted. Nonetheless, uh, he, accompanied by a small contingent of Marines and other officers, led his 1,000-strong party, whom more than 700 were convicts, around Africa to the eastern side of Australia. In all, the voyage lasted eight months, claiming the deaths of some 30 men en route. Uh, if you've never been to Australia, it is like a whole other country. Sorry, Texas. Um, and it's kind of one of those things where uh, when you eat dinner, uh, maybe your soon uh, your uh, brand new bride uh, wasn't quite a good cook, and the edges were pretty good, but uh, the center of the entire country is baked to a uh, uh, charcoal brown goodness and kind of a desert like. They call it the outback, but I'm going to call it what it is. It's a desert. I've been there many times uh, and uh, had a lot of fun. Uh, probably not more than any going in with my boss who is from Britain and going into a small bar along uh, one of the uh, trails out there. Uh, and if you haven't ever seen it, they've got semis, uh, like eight of them, 10 of them, all hooked up to one. They, they're literally uh, trains on the road that these things guys have, and they can't stop within a half a mile. They might as well be barges floating around the roads. So we stop at this nice little place, uh, go in there, and it's a, right out of Crocodile Dundee. And uh, they hear my boss talking, who was 100% British, uh, with a kind of a Cockney accent, too, very thick. Always hard for me to understand it, but I always, uh, always loved this one semi-toothless guy that looked right out of the Cro-Magnon man uh, thing where the people just keep walking a little straighter, each one. I forget what that's called. Mm -hmm. It's the picture, the Darwin picture of the guys keep standing just a little taller. He walks up, looks right at the eye, and he goes, he goes, you must be a palmy bastard. And, of course, uh, the uh, palmy stands for prisoner of Mother England, and uh, they've always had a good rivalry. But uh, great times, great place to go. Uh, ended up finding a lot of friends there early on in the 80s. Long before I traveled, went to a place called Tiger Camp. A lot of good stuff. Go to Australia at least once in your life. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that
that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044. And uh, we had a lot of uh, email from yesterday's show about the implications of the tax changes and what we can look for. I mean, other than just more earnings. Um, talk to a uh, accountant who's familiar with uh, taking care of uh, Bitcoin uh, profits and other trading stuff. I was going to try to get him to come on the show. Uh, but uh, he went on <laughs> apparently another show somewhere. He did not say. And uh, kind of gave some opinions on the way taxes should work uh, going forward with Bitcoin. Got a world of grief and decided that it's just not worth it uh, to uh, take the flack. Um, you know, if you got a edge, not even an edge, if you got a bias, if you're long Bitcoins, you, you love Bitcoins, you don't want to hear anything that is kind of... Uh, uh, negative about it. Uh, but he told me that there may be some tax implications. I would let him say it, but it was kind of opaque. Uh, and I didn't get the whole gist of what he was going after. And I don't trade Bitcoins anyways. So it doesn't matter. But uh, I did talk to him about some of the other implications. And uh, talked to him, this was last night, talked to him a little bit about uh, some of the earnings coming in. And I, I ask him, because uh, I've kind of had this in the back of my mind, will volatility go higher because of especially uh, being able to deduct less uh, forward uh, uh, earnings, uh, or not earnings, losses, as we discussed yesterday, what would happen? And we kind of talked it out a little bit. And I think we came to a conclusion that why this is fairly bullish in the future, it could be much more, uh, we could see much bigger moves lower on disappointments. Uh, his thinking and mine after we just kind of hashed it out was that without the uh, buffer 
that we talked about yesterday that literally we're going to see much wider swings going forward uh, since they can deduct a whole lot less or apply a whole lot less going forward. And it sounded reasonable to me. I've thought about it overnight. And I think if we are going to see the unintended consequences of the tax change, the, the, the known ones are they going to pay less, so they're going to make more money. The unknown ones are that they're going to have wider swings uh, because they can't uh, uh, basically uh, uh, use as much in a single year to uh, hedge the, the uh, underlying money. Also kind of looked at the, uh, had kind of a discussion that went along the lines of it's going to be a great deal more important for the bottom line because even on the top line they can kind of still move it around a bit but uh, he thought that this also meant that the bottom line the actual revenues issues probably would be a lot uh, more important going forward that they probably still can juggle the books for a few quarters but again uh, why you can make a lot of uh, changes in the in the tax area it is incredibly and has always been incredibly hard to change the amount of revenues you have without lying. And his thought was that, uh, you know, you're probably going to see these wider swings and it's going to be tougher as they try to hold this up to maybe sandbag uh, a little bit of a quarter. And it's not unheard of to see, uh, you know, big companies take an extra a uh, week or so into a quarter and say, hey, we're going to, you know, we, we're running a little late on the books. We're going to go an extra week, week and a half. And they finally make their money and the stock sells off a little bit because everybody knows that's kind of what happened. They were just robbing Peter to pay Paul. Uh, but uh, it, just the overall thought was that this is going to be a lot tougher. Uh, got a question in the den that says, do you have any thoughts on solar panel tariffs? Does the solar city benefit or the opposite? Um, my thoughts have always been this until you get a way of storing, uh, solar power. Uh, it works on little Pacific islands that get sun, you know, for 90% of the day, uh, Australia good place to use solar panels. Florida, we can have gray skies for weeks. What do you do? You've paid for those solar cells and they're doing nothing. Uh, you still have to buy and, and maintain and run the same big electric company uh, sitting mostly on the coast because we have coal delivered to a lot of them down here. But that means that you're literally paying for your energy production twice. The solar cells and, of course, the... Uh, the actual plants that burn natural gas or coal or whatever. So until you can actually store up uh, power on some kind of significant basis uh, and a cheap way, solar cells just continue to be a very tough thing. And uh, if you read The Economist, uh, they still do articles from time to time on it, a very uh, extremely left-wing uh, uh, magazine. Um, they basically say the same thing. As long as you have to buy two power supply uh, 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 capabilities, i.e. a regular one when the sun doesn't shine, uh, it is problematic. So Arizona, you can probably get by with minimal uh, uh, storage. Uh, for Florida, uh, you get two weeks of a, a front come in and you don't have any sun. Extremely problematic. And that's why islands and Caribbean, uh, stuff like that, probably going to be a little better off. So mass adoption still a huge problem because of storage and, of course, uh, because of clouds. Uh, there's been a lot about solar roadways and all this other stuff. And if you really want to dig through it, I'll send you links. But uh, we're talking four, eight solar roadways sometimes 12 times what it would cost to actually generate the power from uh, many other ways. You're much better building a dam. Uh, you're much better uh, using natural gas. You're, I mean, we're talking about 
by factors of four. So it's just still incredibly expensive. There's no technology that gets you past 32% per, uh, efficiency on solar cells. That's kind of a theoretical limit. You can build uh, multi-wavelength uh, uh, ones, but though then we're not talking about eight times as much. We're talking about 50 and 100 times as much. The, that's the solar cells that they use on like the Mars rover and stuff. They actually uh, kind of like red, green, and blue. Will they, they actually work in several different wavelengths. Um, and those are incredibly expensive. I don't think those are going to come down anytime soon. Uh, they keep printing them cheaper. And even cheaper still is a problem because you're, again, no storage means that you always have to be paying for uh, a big power facility. Always a trouble. So a technology waiting for a solution. Energy story, uh, storage. Cheap energy storage. Uh, good energy storage is where the real gold is in solar cells, not in solar cells themselves. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. It seemed like we had a lot of people thinking that uh, the SMHs were the place to go short this week. I didn't understand it. I didn't really have a good signal. And I was very nervous about everybody getting short Intel um, 
on the news that uh, supposedly they'd have huge problems um, because of the uh, Spector and the uh, and the meltdown issues that everybody says is a flaw. Um, I've thought about the whole idea of a flaw, a design flaw, and I think that uh, if uh, these, I think Intel had a design flaw like airliners had on 9-11. Did you know that people were going to fly all these things into buildings? Did someone tell you that? Had anybody brought it up? Um, you know, if someone's going to take your product and use it for uh, ill toward stuff, if you put on a lock on the front door of a house you just sold, are you going to get sued because you didn't put a mode in? Are you going to get, I mean, to me, it just seems to be over the top uh, or was over the top uh, in trying to get these things. Nothing has been stolen that anybody knows of yet. No one's been able to prove it. And again, this was just seemed so convenient out here to get everybody on the short side. Now, uh, one of the things that I get uh, bi-monthly and every day, I get the short figures every day. But uh, one of the other things I do get is the bi-monthly report. Um, do I have that here? Yeah, hang on just a second. The bi-monthly report on stocks uh, that actually tells me exactly how many shares are shorted. Uh, I can kind of figure that out uh, because I actually have the short data every day. But it only tells me what people went short. doesn't tell me if they covered before the end of the day. But anytime you see huge shorting, it is problematic. Now, one of the things that happened when this all started, from the time uh, that we got to the end of, uh, end of, uh, well, let's call it the 15th of uh, December on, uh, was that the days to cover went from four to two. Uh, all during this period when everybody's yelling and screaming for lower prices, shorts were covering in a massive way. Uh, it dropped in half. Now, what happened uh, the last few days? Well, uh, we went from a, a kind of an average of about 5 or 8% uh, daily shorts uh, to uh, uh, Wednesday being 21% short. Um, one of the things I hate, uh, is to see everybody get short right before earnings, especially when it's questionable. And that's why I kind of uh, veered people out. In fact, I got an email here. I want to thank you, uh, Hector. says, great call on Intel. Keep up the great work. Um, I've got a pretty good ear for propaganda. And, it, man, this thing uh, has been thick uh, for a while. And... It just didn't make sense to me. Like I said, uh, their flaw was is, uh, just like the airliners who didn't armor their bulkhead behind their the uh, the uh, pilots uh, before 9/11. You you kind of have to know what you know. You don't know what you don't know. And for most practical purposes, this is not a very easy or productive way. You're still much better off using other issues through software than trying to hack everything out here through um, through uh, firmware and low-level stuff. Uh, now, Intel's earnings calls, the CFO today, and some other things that I've read show some things. One, they will have a new chip out uh, probably somewhere around September uh, that uh, is hardware armored against these issues. They also... Uh, basically say, no, they're not going to have to replace any chips whatsoever. Uh, they will be able to handle it all. They said maybe it's a, maybe there's a few things they need to iron out, but it will be a software fix, not a hardware fix. And they thought, just like we've said, uh, the downside to this may be 1% to 2 maybe 3%. And uh, yeah, probably no different than them armoring the bulkheads of a airliner after 9-11. You fix what you find out is an issue that you didn't have a lack of, well, I wouldn't say it's a lack of imagination. It's just how many years, this has been going on for 20 years, and this is the first time someone came up 
with an idea to, to exploit what these chips have. Uh, we also heard that it was all Intel's fault for three days before we found out that eh, actually AMD has bigger issues than Intel, and then even Apple has bigger issues than Intel and AMD combined. And what do we get? We get uh, eventually every get by everybody gets tired with these phone calls and they're over. Anyway, uh, phone call went or the uh, earnings call went well with Intel. Uh, I have not been a bearer of Intel. I told you for two years why I suspect things are going to go well. Uh, and last quarter, we talked about why this thing went very well. And that is that they own the server business. Uh, they are making loads of cash on high availability servers. Those servers are, uh, and they, uh, they oh, lost my train of thought here. Um, on the high availability servers, these are servers where you've got to answer or have something uh, almost instantaneous. Stock market is a very good uh, issue like this. Um, and they're selling these to places like Amazon, where you know they've got 20 on the, uh, products on the shelf and everybody clicks at the same time. How do you make sure that the one guy that didn't get it doesn't uh, accidentally know it? These things have to be fast, 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 instantaneously and never down. And there's been a huge amount uh, storage. They continue to make huge amounts. We talked about their blade uh, system for hard drives, uh, SSDs. Uh, those are getting better. And they even kind of alluded to the new memory and some other issues uh, coming out in the very near future uh, that will speed things up and change things a lot and make them a ton of money. So kind of overall, a very glowing uh, thing uh, again. I think that the smart money uh, used the opportunity of uh, all the supposed flaws to get out. Uh, everybody else started piling in short on the bounce, and uh, they got their uh, lunch served to them. And uh, I don't know if you could bet that it was going higher. I just thought that it going lower was a sucker bet. And Jesse Livermore always said, for a sucker play, you get sucker pay, and that's it. Yep, some server chips for $12,000 a piece. My guess is they're going to be upwards of $20,000 uh, next year on some of the stuff that they have. They also have a lot of other products uh, coming out down the line, and uh, just a lot of neat stuff. I don't know. Let me put it this way. There's a school of thought that seems to purvey, uh, purvey through uh, traders. And that is companies that literally have a monopoly. Intel, a monopoly. Let's talk about uh, Boeing when we come back. At worst, a duopoly. We'll be back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank as a member FDIC and equal housing lender. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30 day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at tfnn.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're going to get to VLO or MPC in a few minutes. I want to talk about Boeing. A lot of people keep on wanting to top tick this market. And I like these patterns that are called the double repo patterns from Joe DiNapoli. That's uh, where you get 10, 15 days above a three by three displaced moving average or a nine day moving average. Let's see what this looks like on the traditional nine day. Same, same kind of thing. You get underneath it just a little bit. You go back above it. You close below it a day or two. You go back above it. Now, if this closes back down below, I think you could see uh, a fee fairly decent retrace. The problem is it hasn't cracked that line. So I'm getting a lot of people wanting to short semis, get a short a lot of other stuff. I still think that you're better off waiting till way into next week. But, uh, you know, are there some, uh, is it possible we get some signs that confirm some kind of top? Uh, yeah, I just don't see any of them yet. None of them have developed. Am I going to go long Boeing? No. But uh, at the same time, just because the stock's not going higher doesn't mean it's going lower. It can go sideways. And that is problematic uh, if you're trading it. And uh, I kind of wrote about it this morning uh, in the newsletter. And that is, uh, if you've listened to the show for a long time, I've always had this uh, uh, theory of three. And that is, I'm going to be uh, hitting exactly the right tick uh, three hours early, three days early, three weeks early, three months early. And I can see some of the things that are going on out here. I can understand everybody trying to grab a short on this one. But my thought is that everybody started kind of turning a little sour a week, week and a half ago. And normally that means you got another week and a half to go. Uh, if, uh, after you saw the first signs of weakness. Uh, and uh, we'll talk more about that. Uh, Warren from Denver, thanks for telling me where you're from, Warren, uh, wants to look at VLO or um, MPC. We'll look at, I don't know what you're trying to do. <laughs> uh, there's absolutely no signal out here yet on Valero to short. And I'm not even sure that you would want to short it if you could. Uh, MPC certainly wouldn't be going long up at these levels. Now, Marathon has the ability uh, to give you that same kind of double repo pattern. But you, what you want to see is uh, this uh, close back above the nine-day moving average for a couple of days, kind of move up 
on light volume and then close back down that line. And then you're going to have a pullback. But these things are fairly strong. I don't think you get much of them. You're basically looking at 68 bucks for support. So you're going to go from what, 72, 73 to 68 bucks. I just think that there's better money. If you're thinking about waiting for this thing to retrace, I think that's what you're looking at. You're looking at somewhere around 68 bucks. Um, look at VLO. I don't even, I didn't even see much in the way of VLO of a support level when you come back. So it may, this one may be harder to buy. It'd have to have a huge issue. Again, this one hit 90 bucks. It was going to 100. You got 99, 95. I would have rang the register right there. Then and there, would have pulled the trigger and said, okay, I'm out of it. And I think you saw a lot of people do that. It opened up right at 100 bucks and sold off all the day, sold off a little yesterday, coming back up. But if you're thinking that this thing has made some kind of uh, pullback uh, signal yet, it has not. You want it to kind of go up upwards and to the right a little bit and then close convincingly below that line, either the nine day or the three by three, and uh, make sure that the volume is right. I just don't see much in the way of this thing. And it really, over the long term, hasn't even broken any kind of significant trend lines or given you a signal uh, either way. But uh, it didn't, uh, uh, I don't know what he was planning on doing on that. I uh, got some more emails here. Uh, wants to know what I think about when. It's actually talking about this in the den uh, earlier. Um, w y n n. Um, the CEO has been accused of some kind of sexual thing, um, but I'm going to tell you that there's something very different about Las Vegas, and that is literally everything in casinos, around casinos, in the business is videotaped. And I know that because I built a device for them to do that, to actually record it digitally and be able to search it non-linearly. Uh, some of the earlier devices, uh, what, I'm going to say 1995 is when it came out. It's called a digital detective. It's kind of based on my work for animation. I got to go behind the curtains for all those big casinos, talk to all the big uh, security guys, and nothing has really changed. Uh, started going to Las Vegas, uh, 1983, 1984. Um, 1989, my boss introduced me to a guy that literally ran all the uh, the the stuff at the convention centers. Uh, we went out and ate with him uh, many times. This is, of course, 1990. He told me how everything actually worked in Las Vegas, and I'd spent eight weeks sometimes 10 weeks a year in Las Vegas at these trade shows, setting up and tearing down our booth, uh, talking with other folks, um, and uh, working on stuff in my spare time in hotel rooms. So I was very familiar with Las Vegas and very familiar with the way it worked from having the inside guy who had to work with the unions. Uh, but uh, I'm going to tell you that I suspect that Mr. Wynn uh, – weathers this storm. I don't know if today is the day you want to buy this thing uh, for the weather, but my guess is in a couple of weeks, uh, this will might be a buying opportunity if the market hasn't rolled over already. Uh, but my guess is you're going to find out that uh, this may just be kind of ginned up a bit. Um, this is not uncommon uh, in Las Vegas politics. And my guess is this is probably politically motivated at some level and probably well-funded by someone because, like I said, everything is videotaped. And, I mean, I'm not counting. You know, they were videotaping and storing all that data from everything that they did, kind of like uh, the broker-dealers uh, where every phone call is recorded. Those things were recorded and around for a long time. He did come out, deny that anything at all happened, and uh, we'll see. But my guess is that he weathers the storm over time, and uh, there's a lot of inside baseball going on in Las Vegas. It is a town where it keeps its secrets, but I know a few of them. Uh, tape, actually di all digital now, all stored in the cloud somewhere. And I think they have to carry they they care uh, they keep the 
uh, back then they kept the floor, uh, tra the uh, casino floor for two months. Uh, but they kept everything in the casino when you walked in and out for years. They could go back, if they found somebody that was stealing something, they could go back and see every time the person came in or out uh, for the last two years. They had, even in the 90s, they had an Israeli company supplying them with uh, face uh, identification software. So uh, nothing new out there. My guess is probably see wind, weather, the storm, so keep an eye on that. That may be a nice play. After, a, in fact, if we get a bigger market pullback, maybe very interesting. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining Mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Achievers rise above the rest, and when they see an opportunity, they take action, massive action. Achievers capitalize on every resource in order to experience success at its absolute max. And on Wednesday, January 31st, 5 to 6 p.m., I'll share with subscribers of Mastering Probability how to achieve even more success with the extraordinary tools that I use to call the markets. These tools predicted the Ebola 2015 stock market bottom, the December 2017 gold bottom, why subscribers added to their mining positions this month as well. Learn the pattern that projects the Dow's next upside target of 30,740. Folks, great moments were born from great opportunity. So don't miss this opportunity to take advantage of my 30-day money-back guarantee for mastering probability. All the details are on the homepage of TFN.com. Sign up today and reserve your spot for the ultimate subscriber event. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And what do we have going on? Well, we got a lot of movement out here. Uh, B I I B up 4%, win off 10%, FFIV up 2.5%, Honeywell up percent, uh, the SMH is up 2.5%, Qualcomm um, actually had earnings kind of all over the uh, place last night after uh, the bell, down to 63s, uh, up to uh, 68.25 today. Uh, Starbucks, uh, let's, let's take a look at that one. SBUX. Uh, not uncommon with a new CEO to see them throw in the kitchen sink on earnings and try to get everything cleaned up. No question that these, this company probably 
had a little bit of uh, euphoria in the books, and I think that's what's hitting them a little bit today. Huge volume down, and the question is, where do you open up more locations? Uh, of course, I always loved, uh, uh, what is his name, Louis Black, who said the end of the world would come with a Starbucks opening up in another Starbucks. But uh, you're down here, you've got massive volume of 41 million shares, and you got lots of competition with uh, apparently um, McDonald's and uh, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, both up very strongly on coffee profits for the last year or so. And Starbucks uh, kind of feeling the pinch of the line and the price. Um, I think I go to Starbucks about once a year uh, for coffee. And it's kind of interesting. I just, this always sours my stomach, so I'm not that big a fan of it. Uh, another one out here uh, moving very strongly uh, is uh, one of my favorite companies. Uh, the question is, I just never have been able to get the thing right on the trade. I have not gone into a trade because nothing ever looked right about it. But uh, VMware. A huge spike, 164.90. A lot of shorts uh, in speeds today. As always, we'll see you at 3.30 with Tom O'Brien. We'll be talking about some trades. The Tech Insider. Huge, huge trade. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.